Apple has three laptop series, MacBook, MacBook Air, and MacBook Pro. And prior to late 2018, there was a firm price and use case distinction between these separate product lines. But now, not so much. The base model of these series are all within just $100 of each other, and their thin and light form factors are more similar than ever before, which makes choosing a MacBook actually kind of hard. Of course, we're going to exclude the old MacBook Air from this video, which Apple still inexplicably sells for $1,000. What are you even typing down there? This video is sponsored by Storyblocks, a go-to resource for every creative. Click on the link in the description below to learn more. The word best is relative. What may be the best laptop for me might not be for you. However, finding the most well-rounded MacBook is a more reasonable objective. So this video will compare Apple's three entry-level laptops in a number of categories. One point will be earned for each category, and at video's end, we shall declare a victor. All right, so let's begin. Thickness is a silly word to describe modern Apple devices as really nothing they sell can be described as thick. Well, except for the price tag on HomePod. But I digress. Each of the three MacBooks is quite thin. However, the MacBook Air is a little beefier than you'd expect, with the maximum thickness being actually slightly greater than the thickest point on MacBook Pro. Of course, MacBook Pro retains that same 0.6 inch, 1.49 centimeter thickness throughout, and MacBook Air tapers downwards to a mere 0.16 inches, 0.41 centimeters. That's thin. Alas, it is no match for the 12 inch MacBook, which is about the same thickness as MacBook Air with its screen cut off at 0.52 inches or 1.31 centimeters. They're all really thin, but... Weight is really weird with these new machines because the heaviest, MacBook Pro, is only one pound or 0.45 kilograms heavier than the lightest machine, the 12 inch MacBook. But that mere one pound is a 50% increase in weight, and you feel it. The MacBook still feels impossibly light, and in combination with its thinner profile and smaller screen, it's a noticeably different and smaller device. On the other hand, MacBook Air feels deceptively heavy, and is only 9% lighter than the MacBook Pro. And if I'm being honest, even when comparing them side by side, I cannot feel the difference between the two. In both size and weight, MacBook Air and MacBook Pro feel nearly identical. The difference is truly air. All three of these MacBooks use Apple's butterfly switch keyboards. And to say that they've been well received would be, <laughs> well, wrong. I can't say I've had any issues with mine over the years, but for many, they have been a total reliability nightmare. They're also loud, and many people don't like the key feel. That said, to give Apple credit, they have improved significantly since generation one, which unfortunately the 12 inch MacBook still has. You can tolerate it, but it is, <laughs> it's not a good keyboard. There is zero key travel, it's loud, it is mushy, and it remains a reliability concern. Now the MacBook Pro is using generation two butterfly switches. And despite shallow key travel, they actually really actuate quite nicely but they are still quite loud and they're also vulnerable to jamming from debris. The latest MacBook Air fixes all of these issues with generation three butterfly switches. And while they feel nearly identical to MacBook Pro, they have a membrane underneath to prevent key jamming, traps debris. And then a nice side effect of this rubber membrane is that it also is a tad quieter. So yeah, MacBook Air takes this one. Apple makes the best trackpads in the business, so you can't really go wrong with any of them. They all have multi-touch gesture support and Apple's Taptic Engine, which has proved insanely reliable and feels amazing. But well, MacBook Pros is the largest, so yeah. Touch ID is awesome, but it's only available on MacBook Air. It's not even an option on the 12 inch MacBook. And on MacBook Pro, you have to upgrade to a touch bar model, which adds an extra $500 to the price tag. And well, it's kind of a lame gimmick. MacBook Air is the winner by default, but I really hope that Apple ditches Touch ID in favor of Face ID instead. On a laptop, it just makes sense. The 12 inch MacBook has one lonely USB-C 3.1 Gen 1 port. It seems like the worst thing ever until you actually own one. And then, uh, no wait, it, it is the worst thing ever. <laughs> one port sucks. 
Now, both MacBook Air and MacBook Pro offer a generous two ports that not only support USB-C 3.1 Gen 2, but also Thunderbolt 3. So it's kind of a draw. Regardless, all three machines will probably require that you live in Dongletown until USB-C is fully ubiquitous. Apple's laptop displays consistently perform above the industry norm. They are bright, they are accurate, and the backlighting is even. I used a colorimeter to test each display, and the 12-inch MacBook and MacBook Air both perform nicely, but they're only sRGB displays. And while MacBook Air does have a slightly more color accurate display than the 12-inch MacBook, it's still likely insufficient for, uh, for professionals and content creators. Now, MacBook Pro, on the other hand, has a significantly better display. It has 100% sRGB accuracy, as well as DCI-P3. Furthermore, MacBook Pro, and this is important for normal people, gets a lot brighter at 500 nits versus 300 nits on the other two. There is more dynamic range, and MacBook Pro even supports HDR content in apps that are optimized for it. It's not even close. MacBook Pro's screen is so much better than the other two. Laptop speakers, as you probably know, are regarded as abysmal. But Apple's laptops are probably the least worst. <laughs> Take a listen. If no one has the cure, then let's eat the spoon up. Cause I can't say, I've tried it out. The 12-inch MacBook is actually a little louder than the other two, but is sibilant as all get out. Uh, it does sound better with some female vocals on chill songs and orchestral pieces, but that's about it. It completely falls apart at, at the whiff of any bass whatsoever. The MacBook Air and MacBook Pro are definitely better and actually are pretty close to one another. They're both markedly less loud than the 12-inch MacBook, but they both have way more dynamic range. You can actually hear some of the low end thanks to the ported bass trickery. Now, I personally think that MacBook Pro sounds a little better than the Air, but that's subjective as I didn't do any testing scientifically, so I'm just going to call it a tie. All three of these laptops have terrible webcams, but the 12-inch MacBook's 480p camera looks like it's straight out of 2004. Now, the 720p cameras on MacBook Pro and MacBook Air are a little better, and to me, I actually think they look pretty different from one another. Regardless, when I polled you guys on Twitter to see which one you preferred, it was nearly a tie. All right, a tie it is. They all get zero points because they all really suck. Battery life is a major purchasing decision for a lot of people. And luckily, macOS's incredible power management and Apple's battery-dense laptops go together like peas in a pod. They're all excellent. And you'll be pretty hard-pressed to find a Windows laptop with comparable battery life at any price point. To test battery life, uh, I set each computer screen to about a 220-nit brightness. That's about 70% brightness on MacBook and MacBook Air, and then about 45% brightness for MacBook Pro. And I played two 1080p movies on repeat until the batteries died. I used Mr. Stopwatch, a handy app that stops and saves the time when the battery dies. And these were the final results. Now, this wasn't entirely fair, as the 12-inch MacBook I used for the test is not brand new, unlike the other two. But let me show you a little trick. If you go into System Profiler, then hit Power, you can see how many battery cycles are on your computer's battery. If you charge the laptop up to 100%, you can compare your current 100% capacity versus the 100% capacity when the laptop was brand new. And if you divide those two numbers, I get a 2.5% battery degradation, which is really pretty amazing after 250 charges. We can then add an extra 2.5% in minutes to simulate the machine as if it were brand new, but it, that doesn't help. Small petite chassis, small petite battery. MacBook Pro actually did way better than I expected given the higher power draw CPU, but MacBook Air pulled away with this one handily. 
Apple's SSDs are insanely fast, regardless of model. Interestingly enough, the 12 inch MacBook actually outperforms the MacBook Air when writing to disk. However, my suspicion is because the base model MacBook has double the storage capacity, 256 gigabytes versus 128, and higher capacity SSDs are much faster at writing to disk than lower capacity ones. That's a fact. Given the MacBook Air's read speeds crush the 12 inch MacBook by nearly double, I'm sure that if you got the higher configuration MacBook Air, you'd notice much higher write speeds than the 12 inch MacBook. But really none of that matters because despite also being a puny 128 gigabyte drive, the MacBook Pro's NVMe SSD is significantly faster than both. At the end of the day, who doesn't love arbitrary benchmarks? Geekbench is the go-to tool for testing Macs. And while closer than I thought, it's still not very close. MacBook Air's single core score gets within 200 points of MacBook Pros, pretty good. But the beefier boy outperforms the MacBook Air by nearly 20% in multi-core score. And the 12 inch MacBook, well, A for effort, bud. This video is already getting long, but I gotta tell you about MacBook Air because it is super weird. Oddly enough, in Final Cut Pro, during a red raw 8K to 4K ProRes export, as well as a 4K ProRes to 1080p H.264 export, the 13 inch MacBook Air actually lost to the 12 inch MacBook. And by no small margin, by about 8%. And I was confused. That doesn't make any sense. It is a newer, higher clocked, higher TDP chip with a fan. And it loses to a puny 12 inch MacBook? What? So I opened Adobe Premiere, ran the same projects, and finally got results that actually made sense. The MacBook Air outperformed the 12 inch MacBook by about 12 to 15%, as it should. So what does this mean? Well, even after applying the November 16th hotfix for MacBook Air, it still seems unoptimized for Final Cut Pro. None of this really matters though, because <laughs> MacBook Pro freaking crushed both of them. Now, this next section ties the previous two together. Why? What? You're saying it weird. Saying what weird? All of it. Don't interrupt. Why was the MacBook Pro over 65% faster than MacBook Air in Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere if it was only 20% faster in Geekbench? Well, I'll let you take a guess. It's the name of this section. You got a point. MacBook Air is thermally gimped. Unlike the 12 inch MacBook, which is fanless, but runs at a much lower TDP and thus puts out much less heat, MacBook Air runs at a seven watt TDP with a fan, which in theory is actually a good idea. Use a lower power chip, which gets you better battery life doing day-to-day -day stuff, but include better cooling so that the machine can handle more heavy tasks when needed. Well, this idea kind of fails because the fan isn't connected to anything. I open the MacBook Air up and nope, no CPU cooler, no copper heat pipes, no radiator, just a little fan jammed in the corner. And it's supposed to suck cold air in and exhaust hot air out. And I mean, it kind of works because it does exhaust warm air. But this is the problem. The 12 inch MacBook with no fan never gets above 90 degrees Celsius, which is hot, but not thermally throttled. The 13 inch MacBook Pro hangs around 93 degrees Celsius, which is also hot, but also not thermally throttled. MacBook Air hits 100 degrees Celsius after just 45 seconds. The chip's T-junction temperature, which is Intel speak for the maximum operating temperature, is 100 degrees Celsius. So once a chip hits 100 degrees Celsius, it lowers the clock speed to the point that the chip remains under the T-junction temperature. Now, I don't wanna say that MacBook Air throttles per se, because technically it doesn't. I mean, it never drops below its base clock speed. However, it's never turbo boosting to the extent that it could should have it had proper cooling. So yeah, it did well in Geekbench because that's a quick one to two minute little job. But once you do something that requires extended cooling, it just gets too hot to continue performing well. And so I'm gonna have to give this one to MacBook Pro. With better cooling comes louder noises and worse cooling, worse noises. So MacBook Air is actually pretty quiet even when the fan is under full load. MacBook Pro on the other hand, sounds like a jet engine taking off and the fans spin up at RPM way sooner than they do on MacBook Air, which is good for thermals, but bad for performance. But the 12 inch MacBook doesn't even have a fan, so it wins. 
I'll be honest, I ended up really surprised because I came into this video thinking that I would trash the 12 inch MacBook and question why Apple still sold it. But I'm actually just disappointed in MacBook Air. Sure, it has Touch ID and it's a tiny bit lighter than MacBook Pro with a marginally better battery. But other than that, MacBook Pro is just a way better computer. It has a significantly better screen, way better thermals, and it will feel much faster for years to come. If MacBook Air cost, I don't know, under $1,000, this would be a different story, but it doesn't. They're almost the same price and they're almost the same physical size. One's just a lot better than the other. If you want and need an ultra portable, the 12 inch MacBook is great. Yes, it's a bit dated and the value proposition is not great as it's the same price as MacBook Pro, but at least it's a distinctly different machine with a distinctly different purpose. MacBook Air isn't different enough. And so most people should just go out and buy the MacBook Pro. Speaking of Pro, content creators all around the world use Storyblocks Video, where you can get studio quality 4K and HD video clips, After Effects templates, motion backgrounds, and more. A few weeks ago, I made a video about Mac Stadium, which is a company based out of Las Vegas. And I wanted a shot of the Las Vegas Strip, but I don't have a commercial drone pilot's license. And even if I did, I would have had to call the FAA at the McCarran International Airport for permission. And then if I got permission, I probably wouldn't even get that great of a shot. And so Storyblocks Video saved me time and money by providing quality stock footage that I was able to use as my own. Their huge library has a massive selection included with your membership, but you also get exclusive discounts on millions of other marketplace items. Of course, the original artists get commission. You get to use all of the royalty-free content for commercial purposes, and new clips are added regularly. So check out the link in the video description below to learn more about Storyblocks Video. Well, folks, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. Do you disagree with my final assertion that MacBook Air just isn't that great? Let me know in the comments below. Get subscribed for more awesome videos like these. Like, uh, like this video, I guess, if you enjoyed it. But most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy. Thank you.